Lesson one, the fundamental counting principle. I'm going to suggest that anytime someone calls something fundamental, that means it's important. In fact, you could argue that I could teach you this lesson and then shut up and you could figure everything else out yourself, except we're gonna learn shortcuts. But this is my, today's lesson is my fallback approach. If I come to a weird question, Katie, and I'm not sure how to solve it, I'll almost always fall back on the fundamental counting principle. It says this, investigate counting without counting. A cafeteria, a cafe, has a lunch special consisting of an egg or a ham sandwich, how about E or H? Milk, juice, or coffee? How about MJ or C? And yogurt or pie for dessert? Y or P? Suppose I have to choose one item from each category. List all possible meals. Okay, I, I don't want to list all possible meals. I guess I could say, don't write this down, but I could probably do something like, that's a meal, 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 that's a meal follow down the lines, write out the letters, count how many lines there are and figure out how many meals there are. But I'd like to do it without actually counting. I'm not as much interested in listing all the meals for part A. I'm interested in how many meals are there? Well, there's an easy way to figure this out. How many categories are there? Sandwich, beverage, Dessert. Write down three blanks. And this strategy of drawing a kind of a picture analogy, drawing a blank. I'm good at drawing a blank. No, I mean drawing blanks like uh, on, on your paper. I drew a blank all over that trig test. No, that's not what... It's going to be a fallback strategy. Holly, how many sandwiches are there? How many drinks are there, Holly? How many desserts? I'm going to tell you that there are a total of 12 possibilities. Can you figure out what I did with that two, that three, and that two to figure out that there are 12 different meal combinations? Let's multiply, and that's the fundamental counting principle. Fundamental counting principle says, look, if you have X number of choices for situation one, and Y number of choices for situation number two, and Z number of choices for situation number three. The total number of choices is X, Y, Z. Except usually we'll say if you have A number of choices and B number of choices, because we're going to have lots of choices, not just three. The cafe also features an ice cream in 24 flavors. Ice cream. You can order regular sugar or waffle cones. Suppose you order a double cone with two scoops of ice cream. Okay, how many choices for the type of cone are there? Read the question. How many choices do I have for the flavor for the first scoop of ice cream? How many for the second scoop? Well, now it depends. It depends on, am I allowed to use the same flavor twice? Often they'll tell you in the question whether you can or can't, but sometimes they'll ask you to just use your common sense. Can you put the same flavor of ice cream on an ice cream cone? Is there some law against that? No. Then you know what? I think you have 24 choices for the second scoop too. How many different ways, how many different cones are possible? Yeah, you need your calculator unless you know 24 squared. 25 squared is 625. What's 24 squared? 576, I think, times 3, 15, 17, 10, uh, 1,724? 8! I'd rather be totally wrong than be that close and a little bit off. You are all encouraged this summer to try that experiment for yourself. Get 1,028 different flavors, 1,728 different flavors and try them. It would be a delicious experiment. Okay. A computer store sells five different computers, three different monitors, five different printers, and two different multimedia packages. How many different 
computer systems are available. Five computers, three monitors, five printers, two multimedia packages. Don't you dare reach for your calculator on this one. I hope you can see that it's 10 times 15. Yes? How much? 150. And this leads us to the fundamental counting principle. If one item can be selected in M ways, and for each way a second item can be selected in N ways, then the total items, the two items, can be selected in MN, M times N. If you really need to, you can put a times symbol between them, but I'm a math nerd. I know that two things side by side are being multiplied. Okay. How many different two-digit numbers are there? Now, as soon as they give me number questions or letter questions, I find a handy analogy, a handy picture, a DALP for those of you that are in my physics class, uh, is to imagine a little grab bag where you're reaching in and you're pulling out Scrabble tiles. So when it says how many different two-digit numbers are there, what I'm going to quickly sketch over here is a little grab bag like that. And I'm going to put all of the digits in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Because it takes all of one second, Nicole, but this gets rid of a lot of my dumb mistakes. Most of the mistakes in this are, I counted wrong. So two digit numbers, how many choices do I have for the first digit? And I'll give you a hint, it's not 10 choices. How many choices do I have for the first digit? Why nine and not 10? What can't a two digit number begin with? Zero, okay? That's why I drew that little thing to help me visualize. So I got nine choices. How many choices do I have for the second digit? Now, the question is, once I've pulled a number out of the grab bag, in this question, does it go back in and reshake up? Yes, we'll talk about when you can't reuse and when you can reuse, but I think I have 10 choices, right? I can use any of those for the second digit. It's so, how many different two digit numbers are there? 90. Example three. How many two digit numbers can be formed using the digits 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, and you know what? I'm going to draw my little grab bag again. 0, 1, 3, 5, 7. Now, the other reason I do this, Trevor, is now my question is no longer blank. I've started writing. I think I feel better. And then A says repetitions are allowed. B says repetitions are not allowed. What we mean by B is once you've pulled a number out of the bag, it stays in your hand. It doesn't go back in and get shaken up again. Okay? So let's do A first of all. How many choices do I have for the first digit? Why not six? Okay. So we pull out a number. Let's say it was a nine. Not no, a nine. Put it back in, shake things up. How many choices do I have for the second digit? Can it end in a zero? Yeah, uh, six. Tyson, how many? 30. This says repetitions are allowed. That means once you pick it, it goes back in. In fact, the phrase we're going to use is with repetition or without repetition. And uh, B, without repetition. So here, I'm going to pick a number and then hang on to it. Oh, let's draw my little blanks. I'm good at drawing a blank. No, I mean in, in uh, here. Nicole, when I reach in for that first digit, how many choices do I have? Why is six incorrect? Okay, can't start with a zero, right? Right? Okay, I'm not going to tell you that from now on. I'm going to expect you to clue in that we don't start numbers with a zero. How many choices do I have for my first digit? Okay, I got five. And let's imagine, suppose we picked a seven. I'm actually going to go like that as though that's what we picked. And because it says repetitions are not allowed, I crossed it out because that's still in my hand. Shake the bag up. How many choices do I have for my second digit? Five, because I am allowed to end in a zero, yes? Oh, Bob, 
by the way, before you turn the page, how many numbers could I form grand total? Steph? How many numbers could I form if the numbers had to be different? How many doubles are there? You can see there's five. Right? The ones that are excluded must have been uh, 1, 1, 3, 3, 5, 5, 9, 9, 7, 7. Ah, there's five doubles. So sometimes, Amanda, we can find an answer to a question indirectly by finding what it's not and subtracting. Now turn the page. Questions you've always wondered. A true-false test has seven questions. Suppose students answer each question by guessing randomly. How many answers are there for each question on a true-false test? Two. How many different patterns are possible? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. Yes? How many choices, Andrew, do you have for the first question for answers? How many for the second? How many for the third? Oh, can you find a shortcut without me filling all of this in? Is there an easier way to go two times two times two times two? Ah, hey, some exponents can rear their ugly head. How many different possible answer, how many different possible ways are there of filling out a true false test with seven questions? Two to the seventh, which is? Stop. Hands up, all of you, right now. Fingers closed. Two, thumb, four, eight, 16, 128. Of those 128 possible outcomes, how many are perfect? Only, how many answer keys are perfect? Probability that you guess all the questions correctly is one out of 128. Not great odds. Ah, what about a multiple choice test? So a multiple choice test has seven questions with four possible answers for each question. How many possible answers are there for each question? Four. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ryan, how many choices do I have for the first question? For the second question? Oh, can you spot a shortcut? What's an easier way to do this? What to the what? That one I'll let you go to your calculator for. Although it's also going to be 2 to the 14th. Can I do that? 128, 256, 512, 1024. Ooh, now we're getting into my sketchy area. 2,048, 4,096, 8,192, 16,000. Uh, it's going to be 16 less than 400. 16,386? No, am I right? Ah, jeez! <sighs> What are the odds of you scoring perfect on a multiple choice test with four guesses, so four answers for each question, seven questions? Well, there's only one perfect paper. There's only one answer key that all of them are right, but there's 16,384 possible permutations. You know what the moral of the story here is? Now, this is assuming, Katie, you're a high achiever. You want perfect. Some of you are not. Some of you are satisfied with bare minimum. A more compelling and much tougher question to ask, which we won't get to until next unit, is what are the odds of passing? What are the odds of getting four or five or six or seven right, not just all seven right? What are the odds of passing? That's surprisingly a far more difficult question. In fact, we're going to need... Uh, 14 lessons, 14 new topics in order to get there. But once we get there, that is a very handy question to be able to answer. It's something called a binomial probability distribution. And many, many interesting questions can be turned into binomial probability distributions, not just <coughs> what are the odds of fluking into a pass. Can you get out your workbooks, please, and open them to page 
377. Page 377. Page 377. If you don't have a workbook here, now is your time to sheepishly raise your hand. Where is yours? Okay, there is one sitting there. Remember my little yelling preaching at you guys at the beginning of class? Can we get out of graduitis land? Matthias here is also the fundamental counting principle. They phrased it in a longer way. I kind of like the way the other notes phrase it. But for what it's worth, you multiply. Okay. Example one. Now, one way to solve example one would be using a tree diagram. A tree diagram is something like you have here, and they're very useful, but not. I don't like them for counting things. I use them for probabilities later on. So for now, I'd like to use the fundamental counting principle. It looks like I have three parts. Jessica, how many choices for the first part? Read the question. Three. How many choices for the second part? Two. How many choices for the third part? Four. How many different to colored toys can be produced? 24. Okay. Turn the page. Now let's get into some trickier questions. Well, trickier, but uh, remember my little Scrabble grab bag analogy? That's going to help us out. So it says, determine the number of distinguishable four-letter arrangements. So we're only picking four letters that can be formed from the word English. You know what? Over here, I'm going to draw my little Scrabble bag, and I'm going to go E-N-G-L-I-S-H. And I tend to kind of scramble them just so I don't inadvertently spot a word pattern that shouldn't be there. How many letters are we picking, Trevor? So for A, I'm going to go one, two, three, four picks, four choices. And it says letters can be repeated. What that means is after you pick the letter, Amanda, you're throwing it back into the bag, giving it a shake and starting over. So Amanda, how many choices do I have for the first letter? How many choices do I have for the first letter? Yep. So let's suppose it was an N. I throw it back in, shake it up. How many choices do I have for the second letter? Seven. How about for the third letter? How about for the fourth letter? You can go seven times seven times seven times seven, although there's an exponential method screaming out as a short. What is, uh, what is the answer? It's 49 squared. 50 squared is 2,500. 49 squared is going to... 2,381? No. Sorry? 2,401? I'll give you a question like this on your test, but the more interesting ones, the funner ones, because I kind of find these rag as kind of brain teasers, and the, what you see in chest is more stuff like B, where I ask, attach conditions. So the first condition is no letters are repeated. That means once you've picked it out, it doesn't go back in. And okay, there are no further restrictions. Let's draw my four blanks. Um, how many choices do I have for the first letter, Sabrina? Seven. Okay, let's suppose I pulled out an H and it's not going back in. How many choices for the next letter? Six. Then. Then. Thank you for spotting the pattern. Uh, what is seven times six times five times four? Uh, seven times six is 42. Five times four is 20. 42 times 20, uh, 840? Do the math on your calculator, but I'm a nerd. These numbers are often nice enough, and they often have a five or a two in them. I, I try and do the math in my head, because I'm a nerd. OK. Shannon, what does part two say? Now, I want you, I'm going to ask you to do something. Cross out the word first and make it the third letter, because it actually doesn't matter whether it's the first or the second or the third or the fourth. I'm going to use the same strategy. As soon as they give me a restriction, I don't care where it's located in my little drawing of blank. I always do it first. Okay, So I'm going to go like this. 
One, two, three, four. This has to be an E. I'll do that by writing an E underneath it. And even though you might want me to start here, I'm going to deal with the weird restriction first. So I'm going to ask, how many E's are there in the Scrabble bag? How many ways can I pick an E? And it's meant to be an obvious question, not a trick question. I got one way to pick an E, so I just did. Wait a minute, it says the third letter. I, I know, I don't care. I'm always going to do any restriction first. I just picked an E. How many letters now do I have to pick for the first one? Six. Then? No, not six. I'm... Five. Then? Okay, if the first letter, or if the second letter, or if the third letter, or if the fourth letter, I did third letter just to show you that it doesn't matter where the location is, uh, how many different four-letter words can we form? 120. I'm going to come back to the third one in a second. Let's do the fourth one. The first and the last letters must be vowels. Uh, for Leah, my ESL students, uh, A-E-I-O-U are vowels in English. A-E-I-O-U. For all of you, Y is not going to... Well, sometimes... No, not in math. Y is not going to be a vowel. It's always going to be a consonant. Okay? All right. This has to be... A vowel, and that has to be a vowel. How many choices do I have here for a vowel? <coughs> Two. Okay, let's suppose it was an I. I don't care. Or an e, I don't care. I picked it. And remember, we're not repeating. So letters don't go back into the bag. How many choices do I have left for this vowel? Only one. Okay, I picked it. How many choices do I have for this letter? Five, then four. So do you see, even if they give us some kind of a condition, Ragged, as long as I'm systematic, and this is why I find this diagram really helps me visualize. In fact, probably if I was doing this, I might even have gone with pencil crossing out certain things just so I could see what's going on. And it's up to you if you need to, but uh, it's not too bad. Uh, 40, yeah. Okay. What, let's go back to three. The word must contain what letter? G. Okay. So here's what we're going to say. The word has to have a G and leave a space and then there's three more letters. And let's put a letter G underneath that bad boy. How many ways are there to pick a G? One. Okay, I picked it. How many are left? Six, then, then. Now that's if the G was at the first part. Could the G also be the second letter? But wouldn't it also be six, five, four, and a one? And could the G also have been there? And could the G also have been there? In fact, won't it be this same thing four different times. Here's how I'll show that. The G could go there, or there, or there, or there. It could be the first, or the second, or the third, or the fourth. So the answer is really going to be, what's six times five times four? Sorry? How many different times would that 120 have appeared? Four different times. Four different locations. It's going to be six times five times four times four different locations. The correct, the final answer, the total number of ways you can make it is 480. That's a trickier one. That's about as tricky as we'll get for a while. But I hope you can kind of see how we figured that out. It's really three letters and one letter and, oh, also four different way, four different locations. There's four different choices for a location. That was the fifth blank, technically. Example three, multiple, eight multiple choice questions with four answers. We already did multiple choice questions. So let's go to example four. Telephone numbers allocated to subscribers in a rural area consist of one of the following, the digits three, four, five, 
followed by any three further digits, or the digit two followed by one of the digits one to five followed by any three further digits. Say what? Okay. All of you right now, circle the word or. And here is a phrase you're going to hear me repeat. A phrase you're going to hear me repeat over and over and over. Or means add. Or means add. There is going to be a plus sign in our expression. By the way, listen closely. The letter G could be in the front or second or third or fourth. Did you see we really went 120 plus 120 plus 120 plus 120 and there's another way to get the 400 or means that. So let's look at this first situation. We have to have the digits 3, 4, 5. And then it says any three further digits. Or add. We have to have the digit 2 followed by one of the digits 1 th through 5 followed by any three further digits. If we have to have 3, 4, 5, there's only one way to, it, it's got to start with the 3, 4, 5. They told us that. They didn't say choose from 3 or 4 or 5. You got to have that. Okay. And then any three further digits. So how many choices do I have here? How many digits are there? 10. Did they say we can't begin with a zero? Then let's assume we can. So 10. Did they say we can't repeat? Did they say we can't repeat? No, then let's assume we can. 10. Oh, and how many choices do I have for the third digit? 10. Or add. OK, you have to have a 2. You only got one way to pick it. Then I pick a digit from uh, 1 through 5. How many choices do I have for this blank right here? 5. And then any three further digits. Any restrictions on these three further digits? No. Does it say we can't repeat? No. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 or 10 to the third plus 5 times 10 to the third. 10 to the third is 1,000. 5 times 10 to the third is 5,000. 6,000? Double checking. Is it? 6,000? Car number plates in an African country consist of a letter other than I or O, followed by what, Katie? You say three? One, two, three. Oh, it gives me a restriction at right after that. It says the first what, Katie? Here's how I would show that. I would go zero with a line through it. like. Can't be a zero. Is that a fairly shorthand way to show it can't be a zero? Uh, followed by what, Holly? Okay. It says, consist of a letter other than I or O. So I would go I, O, can't be those. How many choices do I have? Well, first of all, and I used to assume all the kids knew, but maybe not. How many letters are there in the alphabet? So if I can't use I or O, how many choices do I have? 24. Dunk. Then we come to digits. The first can't be a zero, so how many choices do I have here? Nine. Does it say the digits can't be repeated? No. Nope. OK, how many choices do I have here? 10. 10. Followed by any two any two letters which aren't repeated. If I'm allowed to pick from any two letters, how many choices do I have for the first letter? 
26, but I'm not allowed to repeat, so how many choices do I have for the second letter? 25. Okay. How many license plates can this country produce? Or how many cars can this country insure? Yeah, what do you get? Read me the digits at a, one at a time. Yeah, nice loudly. How many zeros on the end? Four. Is that right? Fourteen million forty thousand. Okay. Which sounds like a lot, but ICBC ran into problems recently. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. I wish it was always this simple. Curveballs. Here they are. Consider the digits 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. You know what? I'm going to do this. 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. If A says, if repetitions are not permitted, how many three-digit numbers can be formed? Is there a zero in here that I can't start with? No? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4... You know what? I think it's going to be 6 times 5 times 4. That's not too bad. Uh, 6 times 5 is 30 times 4. 120? All right. Now let's start doing more interesting, yeah, trickier questions. So we're doing three-digit numbers. 1, 2, 3. How many of these are less than 400? Okay. If this has to be less than 400, I think what they've really done is they've given me a restriction on that first digit. How many choices do I have for that first digit? Two. Okay. Let's suppose I picked a three. Because what you're saying is it has to be a two or a three to be less than 400. And it does say repetitions are not permitted, so I keep it. How many do I have left to pick from now? Five, then Shannon? Four, okay. I'll erase this little slash. Uh, 10 times four, 40. Okay. How many are even? How can you tell that a number is even? What makes a number even? What's the quick trick that we use? What do we glance at? The last digit. The last digit. In fact, I'll put an E there. E for what? Even. Okay. Even though that's the last digit, it's a restriction. I'm going to do it first. How many choices do I have for that last digit? Two? Which two, by the way? Six or two? Okay, I picked one of them. Let's just imagine a six. How many do I have left for here? Five, then uh, 20 times, oh, also 40. How many are odd? Why can't I just glance at this and tell you it's 80? There's 120 numbers grand total, if 40 of them are even. We're going to solve for the odds, but for what it's worth, I got a backup check, right? 120 numbers grand total, 40 of them are even. I'm pretty sure the rest are odd, right? Let's prove it. One, two, three. Odd. How many choices do I have for odd numbers here? One, two, three, four. Okay, I picked an odd number. I got five left, four left. Does that work out? To, yeah, it does. I know I'm right. How many are multiples of five? All right. A multiple of five means five goes into it. How can you tell if five goes into a number? 
ends in a five or a zero. Now, from our particular selection, do we have the zero option? Okay, so you know what? What does the last number have to be? A one, no, sorry. What does the last digit have to be? How many choices do I have for that five? One. How many choices do I now have for the first number? Five, then. How many aren't multiples of five? Hundred. Okay. Example seven. Consider a six digit numeral. This is the tough one right here. The tough one right here is because zero is part of two restrictions. And you'll see why in just a second. By the way, it says 022713 is a five digit numeral. So it's saying you can't begin with a zero. How many odd six digit numerals have no repeating digits? You know what? I'm going to draw my little picture. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. ready? The first one isn't too bad. How many digits, how many numerals are we picking, Amanda? Okay, how many blanks am I going to draw? Are you going to draw a blank? Yeah, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Not as good as let's get tricky with it or why because I asked you to, but that will be my joke of this whole unit. Okay, what makes something odd? How can you tell a number is odd? Okay. How many choices do I have for that there then? Five choices? Okay, I picked one of them. A seven, maybe. How many choices do I have for the first number? Careful. Why eight and not nine? Ah, I also can't pick zero, and it's still in the grab bag, isn't it? Eight. So you know what? Let's draw this, just so you can watch. I'll draw this. You guys don't need to. We picked a seven for our odd number, and then we picked, because we can't start with a zero, ah, we picked a four. How many choices are now left for my second number, which has no restrictions whatsoever? Eight again. Now, ah, let's say it was a zero. How many choices do I have now? <coughs> then, then, five. Eventually, once you've eliminated all your restrictions, you'll start going down by ones and you'll spot the pattern. Um, I have no idea what the answer is here. Maybe I can figure it out, but first let's do this. Uh, 40 times 40 times 42, 40 times 40 is 60. Ah, what is it? Sorry? 67200? Okay. B. How many even numbers? Now here's the problem. What makes a number an even number? What numbers can it end in? Tell me. Amanda, nice and loud. 0, 2, four, six, eight. Also, what can't this begin with? The fact that zero is part of two restrictions makes this tricky. Now there's an easy way to get there, and then I'll show you the calculating way to get there. The easy way to get there is to go, well, if these are odd, why don't I find out how many numbers there are in total and subtract whatever's left is even. That's the easier way to get there. We're gonna do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many choices do I have for the first digit if I'm just trying to find the total number of six digits? Don't say 10, it's not. Nine, or are you saying no, not nine? Okay, how many choices do I have for the second digit? A nine again, because now I can pick a zero. Then, seven, six.
What is 9 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5? Read me the digits, Tyson. 1, 3, 6, 0, 8, 0. Like that, except maybe not make the 8 look so warped. Okay. So the evens are going to be 136,080. Take away 67,200. Would it just be half the numbers? I wonder. Sorry? Six, eight, 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 zero. Okay. If you wanted to actually calculate this, put your pencils down and watch. What I would have to do is I would have to break this down into two cases. Ends in zero, ends in two, four, six, or eight. And just for my own sanity, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The reason I have to separate this is because it's part of two restrictions, so I would just look at it on its own. If it ends in a zero, I got one choice, so I picked it. How many choices do I now have for the first digit? Nine, then. No, no, I picked zero, right? So nine, then eight, then seven, then six, then five. Or it can end in a 2, 4, 6, or 8. That gives me four choices. I picked one of those, a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or 8. How many choices do I have for the first digit? Not 9, because 0 is still in there. 8. Okay, I picked another non-zero digit. Now how many choices? Now I can include 0. 8, 7, 6, 5. See if we get the same thing. If you go that times that or plus that times that. Do we get the same answer as the other one? Let's go see. I hope we do. 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 or 8 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. That's the longer way and I try not to use that the method, I, I, if I have to, I will. The method that we're, you, we used here is called finding the complement. I can't find the answer, but I can find the opposite of the answer. I can find the total number of answers. If I subtract, what's left is the answers that I want. But every once in a while, you'll be stuck with saying, if something appears in more than one restriction, tackle it on its own first, then tackle any other restrictions on their own next and then or means add. Is that okay, Matthias? This is the fun. Isn't this nice compared to trig? I hope. What's your homework? <coughs> number one, yes. Number two, I'm throwing in a Canucks question just to heap on the punishment. Uh, skip three. Four is good. Five is fine. Seven. Eight. The ones we like, by the way, because they're easy to type and it's easy for me to mix and match are number questions, like number nine, where I give you some digits and some restrictions. So I'll give you these to practice. Uh, yeah, I think nine is good, all of them. There's some tricky ones in there. Eleven.
12A and 12B. And I think we're going to pause there. Okay. ICBC, this came out uh, two years ago. Province is running out of six character license plates. So, for the longest time, car license plates were letter, 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 number, number, number. <coughs> How many choices do I have for the first letter? For the second? For the third? And then 10 digits, 10 digits, 10 digits. In fact, it's 26 cubed times 10 cubed. Can you find that? That's how many car license plates there are. And we thought there was enough. Started running out. Really? Yeah, because people have more than one car insured, or some plates are just languaging somewhere. So about five, maybe ten years ago, they said, well, we can double the number of plates if we allow number, 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 letter, 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 which is why you see some car plates now, and you'll know right away that's a newer license plate. So they said, okay, we, oh, sorry. we can get that many. However, it says, the province is running out of license plates combinations, but they come up with a solution. With the, new, with the new, amount of new plates being issued, there won't be any more three-letter, three-number combinations. It'll be six characters. Typically, it's three letters, three numbers. We're going to see a sequence now. It can be a letter or a number, a letter or a number, a letter or a number, a letter or... In fact, it's going to be... 36 choices, 36 choices, 36 choices, 36 choices, 36 choices, 36 choices, 36 to the sixth. Will that tide us over? Two billion one hundred and seventy six million seven hundred eighty two thousand three hundred and thirty six car license plates. Will we be okay? Tyson's right, hopefully. If you don't believe me, IP addresses, which we thought would last for about 60 years, started running out last year. The last ones were sold, so they're going from, what is it, six-digit IP addresses to eight or something? Anyways, they're, they're changing the whole IP protocol for the Internet because they thought they wouldn't run out. They didn't know it would explode that much. But hopefully. Okay. So says, ICBC looked at moving to seven character combinations like Ontario and Alberta, but found it would be a costly switch and would interfere with administrative systems for brokers that are built for a six character system. So this was a fairly easy compromise. Math in the news. Now you can work on the homework. <laughs>